To start with, load the Houdini project that you want to light. But before you begin lighting your scene, ensure you have a camera set up and that the render rate that you want to use is set. In this example, we'll be using Mantra. Now, let's access the HDR Light Studio connection by right-clicking in the Objects level of the Network view and by selecting Digital Assets, HDRLS Connection Controller. If you don't see this node, ensure that the connection was installed correctly. The connection controller has been created and now we can see the HDR Light Studio controls. This is where we will start HDR Light Studio, so let's choose our renderer, which is Mantra, and press the start button. Because there is no lighting environment in our scene, we will be required to create a lighting environment that HDR Light Studio can attach to. We call this image based lighting hook or an IBL hook. Press OK to create a new environment that HDR Light Studio can hook into. HDR Light Studio is now starting while being hooked to the environment that we have created and can control. Your interface should look something like this. If not, you can reset it by going to Window, Layout, Load, Default, Houdini. At this point, we have a two display setup. I'm going to place HDR Light Studio on one and Houdini on the other. Okay, so we've got Houdini on this display and HDR Light Studio on this display. If we go to Houdini for a second, in the HDR Light Studio connection controller, let's click on the drop down next to the IBO hook that we have just created and click on Select Light Object to show light properties of the selected hook. We can see that the node EnvLight1 is selected in the network view objects. This is because that is the light associated with our hook called My Mantra Hook. We can now see lighting environments texture. It is using a temporary file provided by HDR Light Studio. This will change every time the lighting changes in HDR Light Studio and will keep Houdini up to date with the latest lighting design. Let's go back to HDR Light Studio. You will notice there is a render view called Render View HDR Light Studio. And when we press play and import, by default, this will mean that Houdini exports its scene as a temporary alembic file, which is loaded and rendered in this view. A simple shader is used to preview the light and reflections. Now's the time to make our first light. In this panel, we have a variety of preset lights that we can drag and drop onto our model. The light has been added to the lighting design that is reflecting where the light was dropped on the 3D model. This is because by default, the light paint mode is set to reflection. We can see our new light in the light list and we can also see our light added to the canvas here. Let's start interactive rendering in Houdini to see what the lighting looks like. The lighting environment in Houdini has been updated to use the live HDRI map from HDR Light Studio. We can see that the light paint tool is active in the toolbar within the render view HDR Light Studio. We can use this tool to click on the 3D model to reposition our light. The light has moved on the HDRI map and the new HDRI map is sent to Houdini for our preview render to update. This is a very interactive way of lighting a shot. I'm going to turn up the brightness of this light so we can see its effect a little bit better. So far, the light we have created is on the HDRI map. With a single setting, this light can be removed from the HDRI map and created in 3D space in Houdini, mapped with the HDR content from HDR Light Studio. Let's enable the Area Light checkbox in the Light Properties panel for the selected light. The light in the light list now gets a suffix Area Light and is in yellow, clearly showing which lights are Area Lights. Although this view hasn't changed much, the map that is shared with Houdini doesn't include this light anymore. This light is now a 3D light that can be moved in space using the Smart Dolly Slider to control its distance. We can still control the light by clicking on the model to position it, just like in the other light. Going back to Houdini, we can see the area lights made with HDR Light Studio in the HDRLS Area Lights Network box. So, if we expand the network box, click on the area light we have created and view its properties, 
we can see that they have a texture that is coming from HDR Light Studio. I can duplicate any of those lights by pressing Ctrl D whilst the light is selected and position it someplace else. With a single click of a button, I can return any area light to the HDRI map by unchecking the area light checkbox in the light properties panel. And now they are part of the HDRI map again. If we go back to Houdini, we can see that the area lights are no longer in the network box. Let's return to HDR Light Studio once again and position these lights more nicely. I can change the brightness of the light, the size, and any other settings like saturation for example. If you close HDR Light Studio without rendering the high quality HDRI map, we will update the Houdini scene to use a stand-in blue logo image. This prevents you saving your scene using the temporary proxy files or rendering a final image using the lower quality proxy images. This ensures you always close your HDR Light Studio session having rendered high quality versions of your lighting to store in Houdini. So let's press the start button to restart HDR Light Studio connection using our existing hook, my mantra hook, and press OK. HDR Light Studio's lighting project is embedded in the Houdini scene, so when HDR Light Studio starts, it will load the project where we left off. If we press play in the render view HDR Light Studio and click on import, and start interactive rendering once again, we can see that the scene is being lit with this lighting. The final step would be to press the HDR button from the toolbar on the left and render the high quality HDR IMAP file on disk. We do this because as of now, the HDR IMAP design in HDR Light Studio is shared with Houdini as a low resolution image. So let's choose our resolutions. If you had any area lights in your scene, you could choose the resolution for those here. Okay, we're good. So let's click on browse and choose our file name and location of our final HDRI map and press render. HDR Light Studio will now calculate the final high quality HDRI map and save it to disk. It will then tell Houdini to use these new files on disk. Now if we look at the lighting environment and its textures, it's using that file from disk. At this point, we can stop HDR Light Studio connection and save your Houdini project. This scene is now lit and is using files on disk as the textures. This is like any other Houdini scene and can be rendered. However, if we decide we want to edit the lighting, we can do so by pressing the start button, OK, and HDR Light Studio will restart just like before. We can make further changes to our lighting design, so let's say we change the saturation of one of these lights and re-render our HDRI map. The environment's texture has been updated once again to use our new file on disk. And we can stop the HDR Light Studio connection once more and save our Houdini project. This concludes the tutorial for how to use HDR Light Studio with Houdini. Thank you for watching.